And good morning and welcome to today's virtual bridge session. Um, I started off with uh, some bad use of Twitter, given that I promoted this session through a tweet, uh, not having carefully checked the spelling of uh, the presenter Joy's surname. And so um, I will publicly record my apology for sticking an extra A in um, with that. And um, yes, I've put out an updated one. And in fact, today, very pertinent, given that, that uh, social media is uh, today's subject area, we're talking about uh, looking at Twitter, Instagram, and Wakelet. And without uh, much further ado, then I will pass over to Joy McLean. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. Good, good. Right, I'll just share my screen. There we go. And just get started. Right, okay, there we go. Right, so um, so today I'm going to talk about using social media, um, how you can use it in teaching and learning. And I'm going to focus on Twitter, Instagram and Wakelet. Although after I put this together, I thought that's maybe quite a lot and <laughs> it might be better to focus on do different things in each one. But um, this will be a kind of whistle stop tour and I'll just take you through each each bit and just show you a little bit but hopefully not overwhelm. <laughs> so why should you use social media um, in teaching and learning? Um, so I think the main points are that it's free to use so it's quite accessible. Uh, you might have um, students who don't have laptops at home, don't have computers but if they do have a smartphone they'll be able to access all of these platforms through it. Um, so it's free to sign up, free to use. Um, I think it's quite a good way of engaging students because it's very visual, it's quite informal, and it's easy um, for people to participate. Um, it's a good way to collaborate with other people and share your practice. And it's just about being part of a, a wider conversation. So because it's global, you could be talking to someone from, well, just about anywhere. And it's also a good way to keep up to date with um, things that are happening in your sector, but in different sectors as well. So I'll just talk about um, Twitter first. Um, so, how, 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 should you, how can you use it? Um, and I would say, when you set up an account, probably the first thing to do is you can follow accounts and hashtags. So, like the hashtags are basically your way of categorising content. Um, so, I'll just actually take you to this is our if it's going to work <laughs> this is our uh, West College Scotland Libraries Twitter page here so um, you can see this is our profile page and um, tells you a little bit about us um, and we've got our our tweets down here um, so Obviously, we're using this um, as a college library. So what we use this to do is to um, promote the resources that we use um, but, and just draw attention to things. Um, so at the top here, I've got, this is a pinned tweet. So when you pin a tweet, just puts it at the top of your profile. Um, and this was basically when all this started. It was just to draw people's attention to the fact that they can access their resources at home. Um, down the side here, you've got different things like home will take you to your timeline and that will bring up tweets from basically everyone you follow. So you can see we follow different libraries um, and we'll also follow, um, there's different, um, 
accounts from West College Scotland. So there's um, that's one of the um, Sport Paisley. That's um, the sports department there. Um, and there's myself <laughs> because that was something I'd retweeted last night about a Scottish witchcraft book being published. Um, you've also got your notifications, so that will let you know when someone you follow has tweeted something. Um, you can send direct messages to someone, so that's like a, like a private message if you want to talk to someone, but not publicly. You can make um, lists, so here we've got a list of now, here we've got a list. It's um, of lots of ac accounts from West College Scotland. So it might be things they've, it'll bring up tweets from what they've retweeted. So we've got, there's a childhood department account, um, learner development photography. So yeah, we've tried to bring together all the accounts that um, people have, uh, uh, West College Scotland has. So I'll just go back. Um, so that's what you can do. You can create your own hashtags for um, students to um, contribute to. Um, you can share things, so share content. Um, you can retweet other people's content, so that's basically reposting it. Um, you can say you like something. You can also bookmark content. So if you see something um, interesting and you just hit, there's a bookmark tab and you can save that. Um, and what I'm going to talk a little bit about is taking part in a Twitter chat or running your own one. So um, how do I run a Twitter chat? So this is something I've done recently, um, not for West College Scotland, but um, for a libraries group that I'm involved in. And I ran a chat on um, remote working. So basically what you're doing is you're choosing a topic to talk about. So it could be remote working, it could be well-being. Um, it's important to choose your date your time and the duration um, because if you don't keep it to a certain um, length it could go on for a long time <laughs> you could be there um, all day um, and it's important to create a hashtag that um, participants can follow so I've got examples of some of them there um, that's when I follow UK Lib Chat, which is um, for li for libraries. Um, you've got UK FE Chat, and there's um, I think it's a Microsoft Education Chat as well. Um, drafting questions. So I think it's quite important to draft your questions first, so you know what you're going to be discussing. Um, depends on the length, but maybe five or six questions um, because you'll find during it that um, people contributing might pose other questions in, in relation to that. Um, you can also use a scheduling tool such as um, TweetDeck or there's other ones about. Um, that lets you um, schedule your questions. Um, so I'll have to actually if I find that. So this is TweetDeck here and um, it lets you write tweets in advance. Um, you can add, add images or video but you can here you can see you could schedule it um, like I could write something and I could schedule it for say in a couple of weeks time and when I set that to tweet so that will keep that and then post it on say the 14th of May so I can write that schedule it go away forget about it and it'll just do it automatically for me 
Um, and you can also use TweetDeck just to monitor um, monitor different things like your your timeline or any hashtags you're interested in. So it's quite a good tool to use. Um, it's a free tool to use. So you can just um, go to TweetDeck and log in with the same um, username as password as you would with your Twitter account. But um, I found doing my Twitter chat that it was quite useful to schedule the questions first and have them um, coming up every, like I think I did it every 10 minutes or so, so that I could then um, I could then go and monitor the Twitter chat without having to worry about posting the next question as I was doing it. So that's also important to monitor and um, monitor people um, responding and also responding to what they're saying. So actually, I'll just if I click on the hashtag here, and it's just to give you a quick idea. This was the chat um, that I ran, um, which is the ARLGS chat, which is this Academic and Research Libraries Group Scotland. Um, but our our chat was about um, remote working, so you can see some of the replies here. And it's important to say to people before they do just to use that when they're um, replying, use the hashtag so that we can pick up, people can pick up on the conversation. But um, that's something that you could use with your um, students. Um, so you could, if you wanted to maybe talk about something over Twitter and you could just set the time, the date, you could maybe send them out the questions first or, or just keep them to the time if you wanted it to be more spontaneous and get them to um, just, you know, respond to the questions during the time. Um, I find it's quite good. You, um, you get quite good <laughs> answers like not wearing socks or a bra. Um, because that, that was one of the benefits of working from home. <laughs> um, but yes, it's quite a good way, I think, to use um, Twitter in a teaching and learning context. So I'm just going to move on to Instagram now. So another social media platform. Um, so it's a bit different. Um, it's mainly um, image based. So it's um, very, very, very visual. Um, what you could do with this, if you wanted, is you could create a class account and use it to showcase student work. Um, you might decide to feature a student of the week, so you could maybe get them to um, take photos um, of of their work or what they're doing at home and um, get them to post those. So you could have a student takeover of the account. Maybe you could have yep, a different student take over the account each week or um, each day. Um, you can encourage students to share, share their images and their videos. You could get them to curate different content using hashtags. Um, and just look for, for different things. Another thing you can do is uh, make stories. Um, so what stories are? It's very um, short content. So when you create a story, it lasts, only lasts for 24 hours and then it's kind of gone. But what you can do is you can save it to your account as a, as a highlight. So this can just be, like this could just be a fun way to highlight students to something. 
Um, again, you could get them maybe to create their own. So I'll just give you, this is a wee idea of some of ours. So this was for Book Week Scotland. Um, that's just to show that there are free books had arrived to give out. And we've done a Halloween one here. So they're all quite um, short and sharp, but you can do a longer one here, which is just showing you bits of um, our campus libraries. So you can do one picture or you can, or a video, it doesn't have to be images, you can do videos as well. And oh, there's myself <laughs> again. Um, so that's, and there's Paisley as well. So that's just um, an example of what they look like. Um, and these are some of the the posts that we've got. Now, this is um, obviously the sort of desktop version. Um, now, this will only show you the pictures. You actually need the um, Instagram app on a phone or a tablet to be able to upload pictures to Instagram. So unlike um, Twitter, where you, where you can upload things from the desktop, you can't do that on Instagram. You do need to have a phone or a tablet to do that. So I'll just um, take you through. So I was going to take you through making a story, then realised that I couldn't do it on the laptop. So I've resorted to screenshots, which I've put together. But when you're on your Instagram profile, you've got your profile picture here, and you've got a wee blue cross. So that means that you tap on that, click on that to create your story. And it'll bring you up a bit where you can choose what format you want to do. So normal is just like a photograph. You can do, I think that's live broadcast if you want. Um, you can add music to it. It will bring up selections of music. Um, Boomerang is sort of like a... Um, a picture that moves back and forwards like a boomerang. Um, and there's other things you can do. Once you've got it, you can add text to it, you can add stickers to it, you can put a filter on it. There's different things that you can do with it. Um, and then you can share it. So if you press share, that'll just share it to Instagram. But you can also send it to um, different accounts that of people you're following. So you can see down there I've got like West College Scotland um, and the different different department accounts. Um, so once you're back in your profile you'll see the little blue cross bit is gone so that that's your you click on your profile now and that's got your story on it and your story's there and if you want to keep it you can save it as a highlight. Otherwise, after 24 hours, that's it, gone, disappeared. Um, there's also different settings that you can play about with. So you can let other people maybe share your story as part of their story. You can also um, share it as a, just a regular Instagram post. Um, so there's a lot of different things you can do. So I think Instagram's maybe a more fun way to engage with your students. As I said, it's very visual, so it might suit some um, departments better than others. Um, we'll find there's a lot of, you might get a lot of the students on the makeup artistry courses that use it to display their work um, or photography. Um, but also um, the music department as well. Sometimes students will um, post videos of the music they're working on. So it is quite a good way. So I'm now just going to talk about um, Wakelet, which is which I've been using quite a lot recently um, since the lockdown. And you can use this for lots of different things um, for lesson planning. Um, to collect resources and share them, which is what I've been using it for. 
You can use it to collaborate, um, build a digital portfolio. You might use it for students to create and submit their assignments. Um, they can also do sort of individual research or group research on it. You might create a newsletter on it and share that with people. Um, so Wakelet have, I've signed up as a community member, so they've shared a presentation, which they very kindly let me use some slides from it, which will hopefully explain it a bit better. But it's basically explained in three steps, um, which is you can bookmark anything. So save any content from across the web. So you can save articles that you've seen, videos. Um, I originally used it to collect um, tweets from a Twitter chat or from um, any events when I'd been live tweeting and I used that to collect them and collate them to share with other people. Um, so you can collect it from yep, just about anything. Um, on your browser you can um, install the Wakelet extension so when you're on a page and if you think I want to save that, you just click, there's a little W and you just click on it and that will save it to your Wakelet collection. Um, so the next thing you can do is you can organise um, what you've collected. Um, so you can have different collections for things. I'll show you what I've done later. Um, because I've got a general library resources one. Um, I've also done something for working on doing it for different departments. But you can add your own images, add your own text. There's a lot you can do with it in videos as well. And then collaborate and share. Um, so I personally haven't used the collaboration tool yet. So I'm not quite sure how that works, but I think when you share your collection, there's a bit where you can invite people to add to it. So that that's, could be quite a good way to get students to collaborate with each other or with yourself. Now, what's quite good about it is it will also integrate with things like OneDrive, um, Microsoft Teams. Um, so it, it does integrate with a lot of different apps, which I find quite useful. Um, and there's there's a lot of features. Uh, it's got an immersive reader, so I think that's quite good for accessibility, um, obviously. Um, and you can also embed it in, it, you know, like maybe your LMS, like Moodle or um, a website. Um, I've investigated maybe embedding it into teams so that I can share it with other people in the college um, and also people can copy their collection copy your collection if, if you allow them to do that um, so actually just be I'll just I'll show you my wakelet after th this but just to remember that um, Social media is public. That maybe seems a bit obvious to point out, but I think a lot of people do forget that sometimes. So, so that's probably good to remind students as well. It's think before you post. If if you wouldn't say it to someone's face, probably best not to say it on social media. However, if you choose to, you could make your accounts and posts private. So you might decide that Yes, you want to use it with your students, but you might decide to make everything private so it's just them that can see it and you can see theirs. But if you do find, if you do come across anything, you know, because um, there's a lot of, you can find a lot of toxic <laughs> things, um, but you can mute it, you can block it, you don't have to see it. Um, and also be selective because it's it can be really easy to get overwhelmed with content. So, but you 
it's it's up to you and also it's it's finding what works for you so you might not you might find one platform you enjoy using you find that good to use but not another and that's fine it's just it's what works for you so um i've just got some resources there as well um that i find quite useful um there's some understanding Twitter chats, so that explains the process. And you've also got the help, different help centers for the different platforms. But I will just um, go to my Wakelet collections, if I can find that here we are here. So this, this is Wakelet itself, and these are just some of the collections that I've put together. Um, so this is the one for the libraries and I just used this to put together links to our um, digital resources um, just to make it a bit easier for students to access. Um, and also I put on like um, videos on how to access Open Athens because that's what we use at West College Scotland um, and a, P a PDF to download. Um, as you see, you can divide things into categories, add images. So the images all come from Wakelet. You can, you can upload your own but there's also ones that you can use. And then you've got the different um, links there. Um, so if I edit collection, just to show you, so you can edit, edit your cover image, but if you want to add something, there's just, um, if you click on the cross here, so there you go, you can paste a URL, um, add text, video from YouTube, you can do tweets, um, your bookmarks. Um, so there's a lot, you can, you can take something from your Google Drive or your OneDrive. So it's, it, I find it really easy to use and quite, quite intuitive. Um, you can also change your layout. So I've just got it in the, the media view layout. I find that's the best, but I could maybe change it to a grid view, which would put it like that. That's probably not best for this one. So I'll put it back to media view. Um, and then it just, you used to have to save your changes, but now it just saves them automatically, which is even better. Um, because just in case you forgot, um, this is the contributors bit. So as I said, I haven't done this yet, but if you share the link with someone or the code, I think, or just maybe invite someone, then they can contribute to your collection as well. So they can add things as well. Um, and then obviously you can share your collection um, say copy the code or maybe embed it into teams or share it on twitter or something like that so um yeah i found it just a really good way to collect things that i've seen um also you've got i've put the extension on there so actually i will just to show you i will Click on that, and then yeah, it will maybe I can add a description there, and I can save that into maybe one of my collections or create a new collection to um, to save this page. But um, but I hope I hope that's been informative and. Um, you've enjoyed that and um, if anyone has any questions I will do my best to answer them um, but yeah I hope that's been useful.
And thank you very much there, Joy. Um, I, I, again, a quick one before everyone else does there. Um, so did your institution have a social media policy? Um, looking at things like branding, sometimes um, uh, those can be helpful in, in stating what people can do with confidence and something mm -hmm. can be a little bit restrictive. Um, did your institution have such? It does have a policy. And um, I mean, we started with the Twitter account. so. Before I set that up, I um, contacted our marketing department um, just to get their advice and um, they set up the branding for us and um, just gave us some guidelines on, you know, what to do. I mean, you can, you can be quite informal, I think depending on what the account is for as well. So I guess if you looked at our like the West College Scotland account, that would be very different from maybe say our account or from class accounts. But I think, yeah, as long as you follow the guidelines and you're not posting <laughs> inflammatory stuff, then you, you should be fine. And I think that's a great point about uh, being uh, aware and respectful about the way in which brand is being used as well and work with your marketing people on that. Mm -hmm. Um, coming to the room then, um, who's wanting to jump in with a question there? I, I was going to ask when the TikTok account is coming. But, um, uh, uh, <laughs> um, well, well, you know, yeah. think about that. <laughs> who's first then? Anyone want to jump in? Anyone? Oh, Kenji, there's a surprise. Let's go on, Kenji. There's a surprise. Um, so <laughs> the, there are so many platforms out there that you can use now. Um, I, I, I mean, such a plethora. So do you have any? Do you have any other management tools where you can manage like all of these different platforms at once? I mean, I've I've heard of not familiar with there's the um, Hootsuite. I think is one that's used in our organisation to try and. Um, schedule posts and and automate some of those things and I, I ideally i suppose what i want is is where i can write one thing and it just goes out to many places at the same time have you have you come across anything like that um there's one thing and i actually think this was um one of the courses i went on to the i think it was a cdn course actually the um social media <laughs> 101 um but it's, what is it it's um if this, then that, IFTT. Um, so it's, it's not a scheduler exactly, but there's, you can connect different things. So I've connected Twitter to, no, it's the other way around. It's Instagram to Twitter so that when you post something on Instagram, it will then tweet it. But it tweets, um, it tweets the picture. I'm not explaining this very well, but um, because from the different apps, you could maybe just share to Twitter from Instagram, but it won't post the picture on Twitter. It'll just post a link to it. Whereas um, the, if this, then that, well, you can set it so that the picture will go directly and post into Twitter. If that makes sense. I'm not explaining that very well, but I think there's quite a few tools as well. And I think marketing people might know these better. So um, Google AMP is one I know that we use in JISC. And I, I see that Trisha uh, said that they're using Hopper HQ. Um, but mm -hmm. I do think these sort of uh, social media amplification tools are, are available. And it could very well be that uh, the marketing professionals in your institution are already using them. Pro probably, yep. Okay, well, we're coming up to the half hour, and so um, can I just say a big thank you to Joy for that. Um, I'm not being a Wakelet user, especially myself, so that's something that I'll be taking away and looking at it. So very much a thank, thank you for that. Uh, very much thank you to all for joining and, uh, and tune in again tomorrow.